When I get into work, I immediately hide. Good employees are hard to find. Today, I'm going to recap a 2016 action crime film called Reborn. The film opens with a scene introducing Toshiro, a mercenary often referred to as Ghost. Gifted with skills that surpass those of an average individual, Ghost possesses superior training, quick reflexes, the ability to dodge bullets at close range, and proficiency in lethal combat using a diverse range of weapons. An elite squad of soldiers is dispatched to a specific building to apprehend Ghost. Their commanding officer instructs them to engage Ghost in smaller groups rather than going solo. Regardless, Ghost skillfully incapacitates each team member using nothing but a knife and barehanded fighting techniques, targeting their critical points for rapid elimination. The narrative then shifts to a young girl named Sachi, who, on her way home, stumbles upon a deceased cat. She compassionately takes it upon herself to bury the creature on the beach. Following this, she visits her uncle's shop, run by none other than Toshiro or Ghost. Ghost, having retired from his mercenary life, now resides in the countryside with his niece, operating his own shop. Although he seems content with his newfound peaceful existence, his past persistently haunts him. Ghost confines in a doctor about recurring dreams of him killing people, unfazed due to his perception of these acts as just fulfilling his mission. We soon learn that Ghost has been raising Sachi since her infancy, instilling in her his own principles. He goes so far as to harm himself, bleeding from his arm, to teach her a lesson about the inevitability of pain and how one can learn to control it. One day, as he manages his shop, he's confronted by two minor thieves brandishing a knife. Unperturbed, Ghost, aiming to avoid violence and further complications, hands over money to hasten their departure. Later, during a visit with Sachi to another uncle, Ken, who is in the hospital, Ghost joins them in a public park to bid farewell. It's revealed that Ken and Toshiro are close friends with a shared history. After they return Ken to the hospital, Ghost's instincts signal imminent danger. As they head home, he senses a threat in their vicinity and instructs Sachi to proceed home without him. On examining his surroundings, Ghost identifies a man in disguise. As another individual attempts to attack him from behind, Ghost instantly breaks her neck. The disguised man attempts to shoot Ghost, but he evades the bullet and rapidly moves towards the gunman, who continues to fire. Ghost impales the gunman's throat with a sharp instrument, leaving him to bleed out and die, then casually walks away as the public screams in panic, not fully grasping the events. While Sanchi awaits Ghost's return, a stranger arrives and places his hand on her head. Nothing harmful befalls her, and Ghost returns home soon afterward. The narrative then transitions to another assassin, Newt, who shares an elevator with two young men. When they offer to warm her up, Newt swiftly exhibits her lethal abilities, killing the two nuisances in the confined space of the elevator. We then unravel the mystery surrounding Toshiro's history. It appears he severed ties with an organization that shelters mercenaries after uncovering their disturbing brainwashing practices on young recruits. Toshiro's departure is seen as an act of treachery by the organization's leadership, and they seek to eliminate him. Their initial attempts, however, prove futile as they come to realize they've underestimated Toshiro, likened to sending lambs to slaughter a phantom wolf. Consequently, the boss calls upon a formidable adversary with skills matching Toshiro's, a former comrade known as Abyss Walker from Toshiro's mercenary days. In the interim, Toshiro, grappling with escalating anxieties, revisits his psychiatrist. He continues to share about his unsettling dreams in which he is perpetually executing individuals. Strangely, these dreams stir feelings of contentment and vitality in him rather than guilt. He confesses that he feels truly alive when confronted with danger. During their session, the psychiatrist attempts a therapeutic exercise, mimicking pointing a gun at Toshiro's head. Instantly, Toshiro evades the gunshot, leaving the psychiatrist astounded. Later, Toshiro and Sachi share a meal at a friend's bar, where Toshiro's keen instincts sense imminent danger. Leaving Sachi under his friend's care, Toshiro departs for an avenue where he takes down three mercenaries hired to assassinate him. After dispatching them, he heads to his store to gather some equipment that can serve as makeshift weapons. 
Shortly thereafter, a group of assassins disguised as medical professionals appear. Despite their firearm arsenal, Toshiro manages to eliminate them effortlessly using screwdrivers and other sharp tools as weapons. As he prepares his meal, another assassin appears behind him. Toshiro promptly spins around and impales him with chopsticks, nonchalantly continuing his meal as if nothing had transpired. Soon after, two of Ken's subordinates, Masaru and Max, arrive on Ken's orders to lend assistance. They report that they've hidden the bodies on the avenue and Toshiro tasks them with doing the same for the ones at the store. Upon questioning their field experience, Masaru admits that they're novices, with no prior missions under their belts. Later, Toshiro uses a payphone to instruct Sachi to stay put at the cafe. Just then, Newt, the female assassin, shows up and enters the booth in an attempt to kill him. Underestimating Toshiro's capabilities, however, proves to be her downfall as she ends up losing her life. Toshiro realizes that his former mafia boss won't cease the pursuit and decides to confront and eliminate the mobster himself. He would require Max and Masaru's assistance in executing this plan. When he visits Ken in the hospital and reveals his intentions, Ken pleads with Toshiro to allow him to participate, yearning to die on the battlefield. Toshiro, however, firmly rejects his request. Later on, Toshiro convenes with Max and Masaru, who are in the process of assembling weapons for their mission. The following day, Toshiro intentionally allows Sachi to be abducted, having previously implanted a tracking device on her. This strategy would lead him to the mob boss's hideout. Once Sachi arrives at the criminal's base, it is revealed that she was one of the girls previously held captive there, whom Toshiro had rescued, sensing a special connection with her. Simultaneously, Toshiro, alongside Masaru and Max, traverse a forest path leading to the headquarters. However, their journey is fraught with peril as about 200 tactical troops stand ready to eliminate them. Toshiro proposes a plan where he would distract the soldiers while Max and Masaru ambush them from the rear. Wasting no time, the trio begin to systematically take down the forest guards, with Toshiro single-handedly neutralizing a total of 150 soldiers. This display affirms that despite years of retirement from mercenary life, Toshiro's lethal skills remain intact. He uses only a large knife to fight his enemies who wield firearms, his superior agility allowing him to evade every attack, leaving him seemingly unscathed. On the other side, Misaru and Max form an effective duo, gunning down several oncoming adversaries. Misaru, however, underestimates a young opponent and pays the ultimate price. Despite his death, his sacrifice is not in vain. Shifting focus back to Toshiro, he easily handles a sniper. Skillfully dodging numerous bullets, he manages to close the distance, finding the sniper still stationed. Just as another sniper appears from behind, Toshiro swiftly dispatches both with his knife. Subsequently, he encounters the youngster responsible for Masaru's death. Toshiro, noticing his youth, hesitates to kill him. Despite the boy's repeated attacks, Toshiro effortlessly fends him off. Realizing his inability to best Toshiro, the boy lunges at him with a bomb strapped on. Toshiro, however, manages to sever the bomb's wires just in time, rendering it ineffective when the boy tries to detonate it. Ultimately, Toshiro lands a powerful punch that leaves the boy unconscious on the ground. Toshiro reunites with Max, instructing him to wait while he neutralizes the incoming troops. Surrounded by a special squad, Toshiro draws a scythe and begins to eliminate his enemies one by one. His nimble movements enable him to evade their bullets, causing the enemies to inadvertently hit each other in the crossfire. The enemy leader instructs his men to use knives, acknowledging Toshiro's superior ability to dodge bullets, which has led to friendly fire casualties. As the enemy numbers increase, Toshiro takes a brief pause, reflecting on the karambit knife that Ken had gifted him. He decides to utilize this old weapon from his mercenary days and proceeds to neutralize every threat. His former boss reminisces about Toshiro's past and his prowess as a fighter. Eventually, Toshiro infiltrates the headquarters, eliminating every guard in his path, and finally locates Sachi. He instructs Max to safeguard Sachi, while he brings his mission to a conclusion. 
Sanchi initially hesitates, fearful of abandonment, but Toshiro reassures her that they will reunite later. After dispatching additional security, the final showdown ensues, heralding the entry of Abyss Walker. He was Toshiro's closest friend during their time as mercenaries. Both are equally matched in terms of skills, albeit with different driving forces. As they engage in combat with sportsmanlike conduct, Toshiro is struck by a punch that leaves him reeling for the first time. Overwhelmed, Toshiro relies on his instincts, discards his weapons, and challenges his adversary to a hand-to-hand -hand fight. He manages to triumph over Abyss Walker with a lethal punch. Having dealt with his old friend, it's time for Toshiro to confront his ultimate foe, his former boss. Despite his advanced age, the boss possesses the power to hypnotize, an ability he uses against Toshiro. However, Toshiro successfully resists the hypnosis and delivers a fatal blow to the boss's neck. In turn, Toshiro is wounded by the enemy's knife and succumbs to his injuries. In the final scene, we see Max and Sachi on a beach. Sachi takes a book that Toshiro had given her and buries it in the sand as a memorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.